So here it is, the brand new Google Pixel Slate from Google. If you buy all three of these things, it's gonna cost you $1,300. $99 for the pen, $200 for the Slate keyboard, and then you have $1,000 for the i5 model of the Pixel Slate. And that's a lot of money for a Chromebook. Most of us are used to cheap Chromebooks under $500. But if you want the best of the best, it comes from Google, and that's exactly what it's gonna cost. So here's, so here's a quick rundown. $99 for the Pixelbook pen. This will work on the Pixel Slate or the original Pixel Book. You have the keyboard. This is a $200 accessory, but damn, is it ever good for what it does. One of the best tactile feels I've ever experienced on an actual folio style keyboard. This is what the keyboard should be for the iPad Pro. Google just does a great job with their keyboards and the same holds true for last year's Pixel Book. The next thing, the Pixel Slate. This is what costs the most money. This thing right here is $1,000 and you can get it in a variety of colors to choose from. This has been updated from last year, so this year you're getting it with the eighth gen processors from Intel, which means you have more cores to work with. So if I actually do try to edit video on this, it should produce better results than the Pixel Book. You have the same size 12.3 inch display, but this year you get higher resolution. So you get a true three by two aspect ratio. So for those of you familiar with uh, the Surface Book or the Surface Pro, same sort of idea. Three by two giving you more vertical space to work with opposed to the traditional 16 by nine. That's generally better for media consumption, but not as good for actual work. So it's loaded up, the display is absolutely gorgeous, but you also get those beautiful dual stereo speakers. It does make the bezels a little bit thicker, but they're not nearly as thick as last year's Pixel Book. But what we must do right now is find out how good these speakers are. So the sound is super clean. It's not loud enough to fill up a medium sized room, but I do like the way things sound. It has this very 3D stereo effect, which kind of immerses you into whatever you're watching. The highs are good, the mids are good, and there's also a little bit of bass, which is pretty impressive for a tablet this size. Camera, eight megapixels, and this is exactly what you'd get on a phone, at least for the front facing camera. Let's see how good this camera actually is. Well, that's pretty cool. It also has portrait mode, so very similar to the Pixel 3. So here's portrait mode. And we'll do the same thing for the rear facing camera, which is also eight megapixels. The next thing is the pen. A lot of people ask me, Matt, should I get the Pixelbook pen? Is it actually worth it? Well, it really depends what you want it for. If you're buying this device to do drawing or sketching on, you're better off buying an iPad Pro. There's a lot better apps for it, like Procreate. But if you want the pen to, let's say, circle objects based on getting context around it, then it's pretty good for that. So for example, if I'm browsing a web page, Maybe I want to find out some more information about what's inside this picture. I can take the pen, press the button, circle it, and then Google's AI will look it up and give me the best possible answer to whatever I selected. The next thing is the keyboard. You definitely need a keyboard with this thing. Without the keyboard and touch interface or the touchpad, it just wouldn't be the same experience. The keyboard lets you type faster, which would be a lot easier to use than let's say typing on the screen, and the mouse lets you get around the screen faster. The beauty about Chrome OS, unlike Windows, is that touching the screen is very easy. It doesn't feel hard like it does on a Windows laptop. You have to be very precise on a Windows laptop where even when things are small on Chrome OS, you can still get to it perfectly and touch just works very well. The next thing is battery life. The Pixel Book didn't have the best battery life. It would get me like five or six hours and then I need to charge it again. This I'm not too sure. The battery is bigger at 48 watt hours, which is about eight watt hours bigger than the Pixel Book. So battery life should be better on this. Now here's the thing. I'm gonna use this device properly for two weeks. I'm gonna really try to do everything on this. I'm gonna to try to edit video. I'm just basically gonna use it as my daily driver. And then I'm gonna come back, do a nice little review, and answer these questions and find out if it's the perfect device for you. Because let's face it, this thing is very expensive, $1,300. And that puts it in the same price as the, a Windows laptop, a Windows Ultrabook, a good MacBook Air, or a very expensive iPad Pro when you get a higher storage model. Model. So that wraps up this little uh, unboxing and first impressions of the Pixel Slate. If you have any questions about this device that you want to see in the more intensive or full intensive review, let me know in the comments below. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, hit me up on Discord if you have any questions, and I'll see you guys in the next video.